Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bants. As always, I am your host, The Bants, and it's finally Friday. We made it to the end of another week, but before we can get into our weekends, it's time for our second and final what's happening in fashion this week, so let's just get right into it. And first up, of course, we have our headlines for the day. And in our first headline, Burberry is lawyering up again, this time going after Target, and honestly, it really doesn't look good for Target. Now, for those of you that have been around the block for a little while, you'll know that this is definitely not the first time that Burberry has gone after a major fashion retailer before. I mean, just under a little bit of a decade ago, I believe, they went after TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and a couple other brands, I think, as well, too, over counterfeiting some of their checks and some of their other works. And yeah, this happens all the time. It really seems like people like the Burberry check as much as Burberry likes suing people. And back then, Burberry actually won all those lawsuits and got a nice little payout somewhere in the nine-digit range. And just kind of going off some of the photos that have been published along with this story, it's really going to be probably a cut-and-dry case for Burberry, and good luck to Target. I mean, they're definitely going to need it. So if there's anything we can really learn from this going forward, it's that you should never ever try to attempt to copy Burberry. Just don't. And in our second headline of the day, everybody's favorite brand, Vetamons, has decided to drop out of Men's Paris Fashion Week again. Now, of course, this idea was spurred on by none other than the brand's attention-seeking crybaby of a creative director, Denma. Fashion isn't about hype, Gasalia. And obviously, he's just trying to stir the pot, get the news on him again, get more eyes on his brand, because obviously that's what you need to do when you have a failing brand just kind of crashing around you. And of course, I think this is kind of a win-win, really. Demna gets what he wants, he gets the publicity and the news that comes along with this, even though fashion really isn't about hype, right, Denma? And for the rest of us, we actually get to keep fashion at Men's Paris Fashion Week. All right, and with our headlines now done, let's move on to our art stories for the day. And first up, Felipe Pantone is back with a couple new images from his newest exhibit going on in Brussels. So if you're a fan of his or just want to see some more very interesting new works in a geometrical sense, definitely check these out. Then Hypey sat down with artist Mad Saki going over his recent exhibit, which we showed off just a little while ago. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about his style or why he does things the way he does, I definitely give this a read. Then some new images popped up of some of the newest renovations that the Palms Casino in Las Vegas has recently done. And honestly, I think it's absolutely amazing. What they basically did is they spent hundreds of millions of dollars renovating the casino and putting a lot of that into art. As you can see in some of these photos, they had brought in Damien Hirst and Cause and Revoke and a whole bunch of other famous graffiti and contemporary artists. So if you want to see some of the new pieces they've installed, definitely give this a look. Very interesting. And lastly, Katharina Gross showed off some of her newest pieces from her newest exhibit in London right now, and they're really just fantastic. Used in both a canvas and cloth medium, if you find yourself a fan of graffiti-inspired work, especially that still has a spray gun technique in it, definitely check this out as well. Okay, and now moving back into our fashion stories of the day, we are starting off once again with another Supreme collaboration, although this time with Levi's, and everybody can finally calm down because once again, it's shit. Believe me, the idea of Supreme becoming a good streetwear company again scared me too. So what is this collection? It's pinstriped denim. No, seriously, that's it. It's just pinstripe denim. You got six pieces here, three pairs of jeans and three jackets in whichever colorway you want. Either a washed gray, a washed blue, or a hot pink because all those colors work super well with pinstripe denim. So if you want to go pick this up, then head over to the Supreme online store because even after being there for a week, it's still actually available. If that isn't enough of an indicator to tell you exactly how shit this collaboration is, then I don't think I could possibly convince you otherwise. 
then brand Balmain showed off their newest resort collection. And unlike the Givenchy one that we talked about in our last video, this one is actually absolutely fucking amazing. Now this collection can really be broken down into three separate categories in my opinion. The first being maximalism, the second being the black and white pieces, and the third being what I would consider texturalized maximalism. Now starting off with the first, the maximalism comes off here in many different forms. We have a whole bunch of pastel colors as well as neon colors, as well as all over prints and patterns that all come off in not only single pieces but in some really nice layering as well too. Then we have the black and white pieces which there's a lot of them and they're done in a variety of designs be it classical and some very nice modern pieces as well and all of these pieces are done in a variety of different materials and textures and silhouettes the best of which being those knit pieces which are absolutely fucking incredible and lastly we have the texturalized maximalized pieces which are done in both the black and white and the multicolored colorways and truthfully the accents they put on these pieces to maximize them are just phenomenal be it sequins or crystals or foiling or studs you name it they've basically done it here so definitely a shout out and a mass kudos to Oliver this is by far one of your best showings yet then I'd quickly like to just give a shout out to the Nike and Alix capsule collection for having one of the shittiest old books I have seen in a long time because yeah what better way to show off your product than by one making the lighting and the poses just impossible to see some of the pieces and two when you actually do show off the pieces throwing enough filters and effects on them to make them completely unvisible to the average person looking at them. Like, honestly, really good job guys. I totally want to buy this collection now. Then brand Human Made showed off some more of their newest pieces from their Spring Summer 2018 collection and all I gotta really say is it's just always consistently good. Like yeah, I really hate to make this review as short as I am going to, but that really just sums up Human Made. We have some really nice graphics here, we have some really nice button ups, some nice patterns on those as well too. I mean just overall, really consistent stuff and nothing less than what you'd expect from the man behind the better part of Babe's existence. Then Huff showed off their newest Summer 2018 lookbook and I think they did a pretty decent job as well. In this lookbook you can definitely see that it looks like Huff is really trying to push that more mature streetwear look that we've talked about in the past with other brands that have been doing it like Palace and Wacko Maria and brands like that basically. We see a lot of graphic designs here which seems to be really the bulk of what they're doing but even so the graphics themselves very nice not overly loud or vibrant and just really clean overall whether it be on a t-shirt or an all-over pattern on a button-up or even on a long sleeve aside from that there's some really nice jacket designs as well here too as well as some really nice quality or at least quality looking pants to go along with the rest of these outfits and even though personally I'm not a big fan I do have to say the new Huff shoes from this season looking pretty good as well too so if you are in the market for some more summer streetwear staples try saying that five times fast I would definitely check some of this out pretty cool stuff now going back to Levi's for another collaboration, we see them this time with designer Feng Chen Wang, and honestly, these are pretty interesting. Now from a consumer standpoint, do I consider these wearable? Fuck no. But that's not really the point of this collaboration. You can really see Feng Chen Wang's designs and creativity really pull through in these pieces. And truthfully, when I actually look at some of these jeans, it's kind of like a eureka moment. It kind of makes me feel like one of those kind of ingenious inventions where you're kind of like, damn, why didn't I think of that before X did, you know? 
and really overall even though this is one of those ideas I don't think there's really anybody out there who could have really come and made these pieces as well as Wang did. Aside from maybe Shane Oliver, but if he did this, he'd probably throw a shit ton of bondage straps on it as well. So shoutouts here to Feng Chen Wang. I really look forward to seeing what you pull up next. And lastly, brand L House came through with their Spring Summer 2018 lookbook. And man, this is absolutely fucking killer. For those of you who are unaware of L House, let me kind of bring you up to speed on them. They started off originally as a denim retailer, a fine denim retailer, raw denim retailer of sorts, if you want to call them that. And over the last couple years, they've kind of taken on this ideology that they've pulled from a lot of other well-known, reputable brands, especially out of Japan, such as Visvim and Capital and Fundamental, and taken those ideas and kind of boiled them down into their own line. And as their evolution has kind of continued, they've done an absolutely fantastic job. And you really see the culmination of that here in this collection. I mean, just starting off, we see some of the cleaner pieces, which have that kind of somewhere between vintage military and vintage Americana vibe to them, rivaling anything, in my opinion, that a dub taps or a 316 would do. But then, of course, we have to move on to the grails here, the patchwork, and it comes off in a variety of different forms here. I mean, we have the kind of denim slash indigo Japanese heritage style patchwork in some of these pieces. And then we have the much more complex, much more aesthetic patchwork in the utilitarian styles slash workwear styles that you'd see from people like Hiroki or Watanabe or anybody along their lines. And I know what you may be thinking. If this brand is as good as it is, why haven't we heard of them before? And I will give you the reason why. It's because they're based out of Jakarta, Indonesia. And out of all the Eastern Asian countries that have really kind of flown under the radar the last few years, Indonesia is basically at the bottom. But there is a silver lining to all of this. If you have been looking into maybe a piece by Visvim or by Conde Garçon Man and haven't been able to afford it, well, definitely check some of these out because they now ship internationally and they are close to a third, sometimes a quarter of the price of what you'd spend on some of those designer brands. So absolutely fantastic job by L House and as always, I can't wait to see what the next collection brings. All right, and finally, let's move on to our articles for the day. First up, Hells did a nice little overview slash interview with brand Gustin. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the denim company and kind of what they've been up to recently, I definitely check this out. Then Fashion used to put out a very interesting article kind of going over the idea of what happens in the interim between creative houses having head designers. And they kind of go into some of the kind of cons that come along with not having a creative director, creative designer on the team as a brand can possibly fall into irrelevance really quickly, especially in today's fashion cycle, and how it's really up to the in-house fashion teams to really kind of step up and kind of persevere in the industry. And overall, very cool kind of read. If you're interested in kind of the back of house of fashion, then definitely look this one up. And lastly, SCMP put out an article on the idea of how China's textile industry is slowly kind of falling from the pedestal it was once on. They talk about some of the reasons why basically other countries getting the outsources of textiles and kind of the rising labor costs of basically Chinese people now and it's really kind of an eye-opener because you always expect you know China to be the cheapest of goods and textiles and things like that but it doesn't really seem to be the case anymore especially now that Chinese economy is kind of rising up in the world so if you want to learn a little bit more about that and kind of the economic impact that fashion has especially on the back end then I would definitely look at this one as well. 
on sale. Alright guys, and with that, we've finally come to the end of our whip for the day. And as always, if you want to read some of the articles I talked about or see some more images that I wasn't able to include in this video, I've linked everything in the description down below. And if you are new here, then welcome. We do these What's Happening in Fashion videos twice a week, every Monday and Friday. So if you're a fan and want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or even just want to talk fashion in general, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I am always willing to talk fashion. And thank you guys once again, as per usual, for watching these videos and supporting my content. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. And as always, until next time.